Today we are going to speak about uh, yeah, how to become a commodity broker. So let's dive in. Here we go. So how to become a commodity broker. So here's what I'm going to talk about. First, I'm going to just to specify the differences between a trader and a broker. Then I'm going to explain the different type of broker of commodity brokers that you that we can find. Then I'm going to speak about my experience as a commodity broker because I like to speak about the things that I've done. And as um, for the people that don't know, I'm a former commodity trader, and I've never been a broker. But for that line, I broke a deal. I broke a motherfucking deal. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to speak about that uh, at that moment. Uh, and finally, I'm going to share my thought about how would I, how to start as a commodity broker. And finally, the Q&A. So let's dive in. So first, what is the difference between a commodity broker and a trader? <laughs> so the difference is that a broker do not take any risk. So that's mean that he's going to find a buyer and a seller. He's going to put them together, but the commodity broker do not take any risk. So which is completely different of what a trader. A trader takes the risk on. So whatever is the risk, he's going to maybe buy for the, maybe purchase the good, he's going to take the quality risk, he's going to take the shipping risk, he's going to take all the risk on him. So this is the difference between a trader and a broker. So I don't know which which pictures uh, represent the trader, which one represent the broker. I'll leave it to you. <laughs> to you, uh, the, um, yeah, to, <laughs> to figure out which one is it. So, but that's basically the main difference. A broker is not going to take any risk, which is uh, not the case in the case of a trader. Then, the different type of commodity broker. When we speak about a broker, sometimes it's a bit unclear because it means a lot of stuff. So, there is the commodity broker that are on the financial side. So, those are the people that work for broker brokering firm, but they are the people that you need to have access to if you want to buy and sell on, let's say, the, the LME ICE on, on an exchange. So they are the ones that they are going to set you up um, if you need to, to put order on the future market and so on. Usually right now, you don't need to speak to someone because everything is online uh, with API. But I do know that for some kind of... Uh, illiquid market, there still have, uh, you can still have like have some community broker that will find uh, a buyer or a seller for your order. So, but this is really if you need some type of structured product or if that's if you want, I don't know, to buy put and call on maybe not put and call, but yeah, maybe put and call on way market, the way W H E O Y. The way market, it's like a sub niche of the dairy market. Uh, maybe you need to, to, to go to a broker and so on. So, yeah, there is still commodity broker in the financial world. Then, um, the commodity broker, but the one that works for big firms. So, uh, there is, if you, if you look a little bit online, if you will see that there's a, a bunch of quite sizable brokerage firms that do broke a physical deal. And usually, um, those firms service uh, the big trading firm out there. So that means, like, um, to give you an example, and so now the question is, why do a trading firm would need a broker? So that's, uh, listen to it. So let's say that I'm Cargill or Kofco, and I trade maize or corn out of Odessa, Ukraine. Okay. So this is like us. It's not a small market, but there's maybe 10 or 12 uh, main players in this market. And if I'm Kofco, I don't want the other people to know what I'm doing. This is why I'm going to use a broker to find a buyer for my product. Because I, uh, So even though the buyer is another trading house, I don't want them to know uh, that I'm on the market selling or that I'm on the market buying. So this is why they use broker to basically hide what they do from other big firms. 
So this is one of the reasons that there is those, uh, com- uh, those uh, brokerage firm between big commodity trading houses. But uh, yeah, there's also a few other reasons, but that's one, uh, one of them. So of course, of course, if, um, I'm sorry, if you want to be a commodity broker in the, on the, in the financial world, you, need, you get to find a job in one of those companies. If you want to be a community broker in those big firms, you've got to, to, to find a job <laughs> in those companies. That's like pretty simple. Then there is another type of community broker, which is what that you can find often in Africa, but mostly in the South America. They are the community brokers that help the, 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 uh, the producer to export, to have access to the international market. So in... In Brazil, yeah, mostly in South America, I've seen those type of people. They're, to their brokers, they have access to international market, and they have also access to their national market. And basically, what they do is they help the, the producer to export. So let's say that the producer, I mean, it's a family-owned business. They do a few millions and so on. But the the guy at the head of the business is maybe not doesn't really speak English or whatever, or for whatever reason, is not comfortable with the international market. So basically, the way they there is like broker that would add them to go uh, uh, um, to, 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 to cross the, the sea and to go directly to, to find the clients on the international market. So this is another type of, of community broker. And finally, there is the, another one, which is the solo community broker. So this is usually a, a guy that has been, that was a trader before. And now he, for whatever reason, he has an extremely good uh, knowledge and understanding of the market. And um, by this superior knowledge and skills, he can make deals upon something that um, maybe a smaller company couldn't because they don't know, I mean, everyone. So this is the solo commodity broker. And usually this is a guy that worked as a trader. Now he's well off and he's just doing deal left and right just to... To, I mean, because he still wants to be in the market, but, you know, he doesn't need the money as he used to. And so, yeah, this is a type of community broker that I've seen. And um, and this is also, I mean, you are not really going to make big money as a, as a solo community broker compared to if you're a trader. But at least uh, you are in the market, you still can use your knowledge and your skills to, to service your customers and, so, and your former contact and so on. So, yeah. So um been now let's speak about my experience as a broker so the other day oh, okay so how did i source the deal so basically what happened is like uh i someone that i knew um knew an, another company in ivory coast i'm not going to g- disclose all the details about this deal because I mean, it's still ongoing, so uh, I won't do that. But and basically, there is like they said, like, look, Damien, we have this uh, company in Ivory Coast. They are looking for this product. This is a very specific dairy product. And I used to be like a dairy trader for like five years. So and I was um, mostly focused on the on Africa and West Africa. So I basically kind of I knew extremely well this market. And I was like, uh, when he told me about product, I'm like, are you sure? Because this is quite uncommon. He said, yeah, yeah, well, they're sure. He explained to me what they did. It's like, like, look, yeah, maybe I can help them source. So this is how the deal came. It's because, I mean, the people knew that I was, I, I knew this market. That's it. First, how did that make this deal possible? So basically, when they explained what they were looking for, it was a type of way. Uh, I said, yeah. I know the perfect guy for for this uh, for this uh, for this client is basically a commodity trader who doesn't who, who do not have a, like a strong fit in Africa, but knows. I mean, uh, but uh, also the risk profile of the client is something that I would guess was uh, the trader would be happy with that with, with that, and uh, and then uh, and then I knew also that this trader would have access to product uh, would have in Belarus, and those products are usually the cheapest of that type. And yeah, so I'm like, look, let's see if there is something that uh, that we can do. And due to the fact that I knew very well this market, I was able to to broke a deal. So and that's pretty much it. And then, yeah, so and then another thing that I, that I figure out as a broker is you are you are kind of useless because as you are making like a small margin, one time one moment during the deal, the the the, the buyer asked for sample of the product 
which is extremely common in the dairy industry because I mean, you can imagine uh, you are going to buy for, I don't know, 100 metric ton or 200 metric ton of a product. And if the, the product doesn't fit with your recipe, I mean, this could be quite be a, a, a big issue. So this is why you want to, to have a sample to like do your own recipe in your laboratory before buying it. And at that moment, I said, look, I'm not going to, to pay for the shipping of the sample, even though it's like 200, uh, 200 bucks. I'm like, I don't fucking care. I mean, the, my margin doesn't <laughs> allow me to pay 200 bucks on the on a sample and then usually also with that type of customer um they are quite unreliable so if you pay for that example then it's oh look it doesn't work and show they don't speak to you so so this is also why i wouldn't i, I don't want to invest in in that customer so i'm like okay so we we just um stop the deal like this and i, I mean I, I don't care and at that moment the buyer say okay look i can pay 200 bucks for the sample that's okay I'm like okay but if i would have were a trader at that moment, I would have paid for the sample. And it was like, okay, this is an expense to business. This is normal. But as a broker, I mean, I said, look, fuck that shit. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to pay for them. Uh, so this is some, something that uh, I, I I didn't realize before that is like as a as a broker, you maybe don't have the means to, to conduct proper business. The fact that you are not going to fly around to see your customer because you, you don't have the, I mean, the margin, the, your margin are not big enough to, to allow the type of expense. And also as a, as a broker, you are extremely weak. I mean, if let's say we do that deal and the next deal, they just shoot me out because now they contact directly the, the, um, the supplier, then there's like nothing that I can do. So I'm like, okay, so you, I don't want to invest in that, in, in that buyer because my position is weak. So I'm like, Ugh. I mean, is it really something that, that makes sense? So anyway, so now uh, I broke the deal, everyone signed the contract, blah, blah, blah. And now what I'm seeing is like, uh, we are in the moment, or I can understand that the buyer is not extremely sophisticated. They don't really know how to import this product, what they need to do, and so on. And also the Belarus um, supplier, I mean, it's the first time that they ship a thing there. So they have a lot of questions. So I'm now I'm in the middle of that shit, so I need to explain to everyone what they need to do. And I'm like, why, why, why the fuck am I doing this for? So for me, it doesn't really worth it. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of mental for really small margin. So this is why I think what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put the two guys together and say, look, uh, this is a supplier. This is uh, the client. Just serve this shit uh, behind you. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want, uh, I don't want to, to make money with that. Like just serve, serve it. Uh, I, I mean, I don't want to take care of this shit. So. Because for me, it doesn't really worth it. So I did I did it because I thought, like, look, maybe I can broker a deal and make a YouTube video about it. It would be fun. But no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, that's, so now I'm in the middle of that shit. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so for me, being a broker is fucking useless because of um, what I'm just explaining. So that was for my experience as a, as a broker. Maybe you have another experience. We can discuss uh, uh, about that after that. So now how to start. If you want to start your broker, your, broker, <laughs> your firm, what would you need to do? So you need to go on LinkedIn and spam people with asking for LOI, letter of intent. No, this is a fucking joke. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't do that, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, so how, what would I do? So uh, actually, I wouldn't start a I wouldn't start as a broker. What I would do is I would start with um, a very, very small amount, amount of a specific commodity, and I would start like this. So let's say that you are, I don't know, in a country that uh, grow cocoa. I would go inside the country. I would buy 10, 10 bags, 100 bags or whatever of cocoa, and then I would go at the port, and I would sell it at the port. The same, the same with the sesame seed. I will go inside the country, I will see the farmer, I will buy sesame seed, and then I will sell them at the port. Even if it's a very, very small quantity, start like this. You can do the same with uh, with uh, people that do scrap, with recyclers. Go there on the recycling yard, ask for the, a niche product, like, I don't know, like battery, lead, or whatever. Buy a small amount and find a buyer. The same tip with chemicals, bitumen, or coil. Start small, start with one palette, start with something, but take ownership of what you are fucking doing. So and don't try to be a broker. This is useless. We are in 2022 right now. I mean, people have WhatsApp on the, uh, on the everyone does WhatsApp. 
I mean, they don't need you to, to, to connect. I mean, the, the value is zero. You are getting paid in function of the value that you get, you are, you are putting on the market plate as a broker. I mean, the value is too thin. Anyway, so Q and A. So uh, let's uh, take the first question. Bim, bim, bim. Um, is it a difference between an online and physical commodity broker? I don't, I don't, I don't understand the question. Okay, so Lucas, what, what do you do? I, I guess uh, if you are out of South America, is you help exporter? <laughs> the fucking LOI. So <laughs> he knows. Uh, another question. Um, no, man, you just uh, set up your limited company and that's it. Voilà. So uh, if you have like any question, just uh, um, uh, write it in the chat. If you want to come and uh, chat with me, uh, I still have, um, I don't know, 10 minutes in front of me. And also, what do you think about the broker? I mean, <laughs> about the, the broker business? Do you think I'm too harsh? Do you think, wh what do you think about it? Just let me know. Yeah, man, as I said, uh, as I said, stop with one palette, man. If you have a limited budget, stop with one palette. Because there is something that if you want to get money, if you want to earn money, you need to provide value. If you uh, are a former commodity trader or for whatever, uh, as someone that okay, someone that uh, worked in that specific industry for like five years, 10 years, whatever, you have some type of knowledge that are valuable. So then maybe you can broke deal. But if you start from the from zero, what is your value? What is the value that you, you bring to um to your customer, to your supplier, well, I, I don't really see it. So this is why it's, you don't get paid. <laughs> so I would start with like one palette of one thing. Um, yeah, Jean-Claude, so you saw the um, you saw the interview that we did with Nick. It's in the Shipping and Commodity Academy in the last module. Uh, mm -hmm. Check check the um, uh, check the interview and look how it started. Yeah, yeah. In in, um, in South America, there is a, a lot of uh, brokerage out there that, uh, as you said, they already have agreement with uh, a lot of uh, suppliers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no, this is not. So this is not exactly what he said. He said, yeah, of course. The end is like, okay, how do we get one hundred k, one hundred k, one hundred thousand US dollar? I mean, how long does it take you to have one hundred thousand US dollar? The fastest way to get 100,000 euro is to have someone that lends it to you. That's the, <laughs> this is the fastest way. But what, what is explained is like you can uh, use payment term to um, to bridge those uh, what, what you need. So if you need 100k, what, what actually what he did is um, I mean I would he, he strongly I get, <laughs> he strongly advised against it. But what he did is he got like uh, to pay 100k, he got five customer to put 20% down. To pay the first uh, to pay a 100k and then he shipped the product to the first customer and then he had four other customers that were waiting for the product so he had to find another customer to pay 20 percent and so on this this is a type of cavalry that uh, i would not recommend you to do but if you listen to the to this interview again he, he said the same he started with one palette with one palette and it took him like one year to sell this palette and now he's making i'm not going to say but a lot a lot of money but it started he started with one palette and also, Jean-Claude, I knew about one guy, like a close friend, which is a guy from Nigeria. He started by buying like a few bags of cocoa in the at the farmer and then resell it at the port. And started like this. And now, I guess, he's netting profit half a million or something like this, five years down the road. So this is what I, what I would do. Man, I don't know. It's one of the toughest application uh, out there. We have a few students at the Shipping Community Academy uh, that uh, went through it and that got the job. So maybe apply for the Shipping and Community Academy, <laughs> and you will get an edge. So, but uh, but yeah, man, it's like no specific um, uh, no specific advice. So if you are doing the process, uh, I hope that you get the, the interview. Then it's up to you. But again, if you, I, I'm I'm going to sell my courses, but at this level. Uh, it works. And if you uh, if you get the interview, uh, then at least you understand what is going on in the shipping commodity business. 
Yeah, sure, sure. Definitely. I mean, right now the market is is really tight. Like, um, so it's very very difficult to make a living uh, as a solo broker. Like, uh, if you are not uh, helped by a, a, corpor a corporation or whatever, if you want to start all by yourself, it's going to be almost impossible. I'm telling you. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I, I would say almost because. I'm sure there's like some I mean, there are like six billion, seven billion people on this planet. So I'm sure some people <laughs> find a way to make a to make a living out of it, but uh, it's it's difficult. Yeah, yeah tough uh, Jean Claude. What I would do is like uh, sell first to mitigate risk as a beginner, you sell first. And then you find uh, your supplier, and if it doesn't work, you're like dude, I'm sorry, take your money back. <laughs> You're doing deal in the back of your first. <laughs> so yeah, about the spamming on uh, on LinkedIn, I'm I'm not the only one then. Oh, never scammers, yeah. Uh, you mentioned in the previous stream that most of trading houses are small, uh, family-run businesses, and new entrants are rare because of uh, capital requirement. Do you think that? Yes, yes, I think that. I think it's very, very difficult to start. I think it's, uh, uh, I'll be honest, uh, um, I just today at lunch, I spoke um, with the head of finance of, a, not small now, I think a medium-sized uh, trading house, and he said, like, we started at the right time. Now it will be impossible to get uh, the bank back. So what you need to, the, now the, the community trading that starts, like, big, uh, right from the beginning, they are backed by a private equity firm. So that's how, how it works now. I found that those LOA guys, uh, yeah, sure. It's, uh, I mean, they don't know. This is uh, how do you say the blind that lead, that lead the, the blind. I mean, they don't know what the fuck they are doing. They, I mean, they are scammers or they don't know what they are doing. As I said uh, already a few times, I've been trading for 15 years. I've never, I've never signed an LOA in my life. Uh, good question. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there is a reason that um, the market is structured like this, is that because there is a lot of deals that the big firm doesn't want to do. For whatever reason, maybe it's compliance, maybe it's um, they are not happy with the risk, they are not happy with their ROI, but um, no, I don't think so. Um, what do you... It's mean that, okay, what do you mean by you sell first? Okay, in a in a normal transaction, if you are in the middle, you buy a product and then you sell a product, hopefully at a higher price. Let's say let's say you you buy I don't know like something like sesame seed. Okay, sesame seed. You buy one ton of sesame seed and then you resell one ton of sesame seed to whoever. So what I would start is like you start by selling. So look, guy. I'm going to sell to you one ton of uh, sesame seed. It's you need to put like 50% prepayment, 24, 20% prepayment, whatever. You take this money, and once you have this money, then you go and you buy it, and you hope that the market hasn't really moved, <laughs> so you are not losing money. Yeah, gold price was remain high for a long time. Not maybe not as high as now because now it's. Uh, Completely insane, but the uh, coal price will remain high. Um, and in Europe, I mean, we really need a, a, this winter. Maybe we are okay because uh, there's a lot of stock, but not really sure. But next winter is going to be a, a fucking disaster. I mean, you need to do your homework, man. <laughs> This is, uh, yeah, you need to do your work. You need to understand what the people want. You need to do your work. You need to speak with uh, farmers. If it's sesame seed, whatever, you need to speak, to speak with farmers. You need to speak with processors. You need to speak with buyers. You need to speak with sellers. You need to speak with everyone. This is why you need to, again, you need to bring some value to the marketplace if you, you want to get value. So you, first, you need to know the product. And if you said, ah, oh, but I don't know why people would speak with me. So then just stop it, man. <laughs> you need to find a way to make them speak with you because you need to understand what you do. 
uh, for example, seafood is the world most traded food. Yeah, uh, is it the most traded in terms of value? It, this this uh, this shit uh, seems uh, real to me. But actually, I know uh, what I, I can interview with a a guy that set up an extremely successful uh, seafood um, trading business out of Thailand, a Canadian guy. So uh, the guy was doing well for himself. So uh, yes, you can trade everything. Okay, guys, so I think this is a wrap. So uh, thanks again for uh, showing up. Um, and uh, if you are interested by the commodity uh, business, you can, there is like a link in the description below where you can uh, download our five, um, adva uh, five uh, steps or five, ad five advice, I think, five pieces of advice to break into the commodity trading world. Um, and then you will end up on our, our email, mailing list and you will get to know more about our product. So, uh, oh, I think there's like, okay, still one question I'm going to take. Hey, man, why is it so hard to get LZ to do this? Any yeah, it's, uh, okay, so two questions here. Why is it so hard to get LCs? So I don't know what you mean by getting LCs. It means you, you can't find a bank uh, willing to get the LCs, or what do you mean by doing LCs? But right now, yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, if you are a small training company, you will not get a bank uh, willing to open LC or even receive an LC for you uh, unless you have money in your bank. So, do you know any stories of being scammed with LCs? What is the main risk? Yeah, of course, you can get scammed with LCs for, for sure. That 10,000 times uh, you can get scammed on LCs. So, don't think that there's, this is because there is an LC that you won't get scammed. I mean, I can issue an LC when I'm sure that there's going to be discrepancies for for sure. So, yes, you can get scammed on LC. So, so you believe the next uh, will be challenging? How do you do the change graphic the operation? I don't understand the question. Yeah, of course they don't want to work on LC because the, they they don't have a bank to receive the LC. I'm telling you. The, so this is a problem, and also the LC is fucking expensive. So if you work on small margin or small volume, they don't want to work on LC. And, uh, and as a as a as a small supplier, I understand why they don't want to 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 work on LC. Pay them upfront, and that's it. It's like this, man. It's um, if I'm a supplier, I will ask. All of my customers to pay me 100 upfront. That's it. And the people that can't pay uh, pay 100 upfront, then fuck fuck them. <laughs> I don't do business with them. Okay, guys. So uh, thanks a lot for showing up. I will try to do more live uh, like this. Uh, if you like the what what you've seen, what you've heard, uh, what you've heard, uh, just. Uh, put a comment uh, below this video, and there's also put a comment about the the, the topics of the next live, uh, and then uh, yeah, just give me some uh, some ideas. I don't know, I don't know what guys you want to see, um, and man, I wish you a really nice uh, evening. Ciao.